Hello everyone, welcome to my video on price competition in a vertically differentiated market. Uh, this is an introduction to vertical product differentiation. Uh, we're going to make some pretty heavy simplifying assumptions for this video and then maybe I'll come back later and do a more robust version. Anyway, uh, so what's happening in product differentiation? In this case, with vertical differentiation, we have two kinds of goods, high quality and low quality. High quality has a measured quality of V2. Low quality has a measured quality of V1. And we all agree that V2 is greater than V1. Every customer in the market does. Now, we're gonna have different kinds of customers. Some who care a lot about quality, some who care very little about quality, and people in between. This valuation of quality can be based on consumer income or anything else that we might think matters. We're just going to assume that there's a distribution of customers with different valuations of B. Before we get to them, though, let's talk about each individual consumer's utility function. Uh, an individual gets utility from buying good I, so one or two, based on a low or high quality, and it's going to equal B times VI, so B is my measure of quality, and VI, sorry, B is my measure of how much I like quality or how much I value quality, VI is the measure of quality itself, and we're going to subtract price from it. So this is a characteristic utility function, it doesn't have all the concavity stuff that we normally look for, but it's just a good simple way of saying I get more utility from a higher quality good and I get less utility from a higher price. And let's see. So let's talk about how this is going to look and who's going to buy what. On this axis, we've got B, uh, how much consumers value the good. And on this axis, we're going to put net utility, which is this thing we just talked about. Now I want you to look at this B axis for a minute, and we're going to assume it just goes from 0 to 1. It doesn't have to. It could go from any low B to some high B. Uh, that will complicate your math without adding any new intuition. Uh, we're going to assume 0 to 1. Our big assumption is we're assuming that all customers value the goods enough that everyone will buy something. Uh, we could have a situation where they don't value the quality enough relative to price and they don't buy anything. We're going to assume that's not the case here. And we're basically going to wind up with two utility functions. There's my utility if I buy the low quality good. U1 equals BV1 minus P1. And there's my utility if I buy the high quality good. Now notice, for some customers, they are better off buying B, or sorry, buying good one. They don't value the quality enough, and the price is less, usually. I guess that's another assumption I made here. I assume that the low quality good is lower price. But that's usually a fair assumption. And then we have other customers for whom they're better off buying the high quality good. Now, if this axis, oops, I don't want to be in the marker. If this axis is all individuals, all distributed along, then this threshold individual is someone that we are very interested in. This person down here is our indifferent consumer. Everyone standing to the left of him will buy a good one, and everyone standing to the right of him will buy a good two. In that sense, this area, this distance, is the demand for a good one, and this distance is the demand for a good two. So we're interested in that green guy, and let's solve for his level of B. 
I'm going to do that by setting u1 equals u2. And let's see, that's bv1 minus p1 equals bv2 minus p2. A little bit of algebra happens, and you get that b equals p2 minus p1 over v2 minus v1. So there we go. We now know that the demand for firm one is B. It's the area left of the curve. So between zero and B is just B is P2 minus P1 over V2 minus V1. And that my demand for firm two is one minus B, which is I'll just write it all the way out. V2 minus V1 minus P2 plus P1 all over V2 minus V1. All right. We know our demands for the different products. Now, let's see. Let's set up profit functions, and then we'll go from there, and I'll tell you about our next big assumption. Remember, the first big assumption is that everyone's buying the good. We could have a different threshold between someone who's just as well off not buying anything as buying the low quality good. We're skipping that. Let's talk about profit. Profit for firm one is equal to Q1 times price one minus cost one. I'm going to assume a constant marginal cost with no fixed costs. Uh, these, these questions get messy enough without having tricky cost functions. Uh, pi 2 is equal to Q2 times price 2 minus C2. Uh, I'm also going to make the assumption, this one's kind of a small one, but I'm going to assume that C2 is greater than C1. Uh, more expensive to make the better good. You could have situations where that might not be true, but let's not worry about it. Now, what we can do is we can do a multi-stage game where in the first stage, we choose our Vs, and in the second stage, we choose our Ps. This is just an introduction to the product differentiation, so I'm not going to do that. My second big assumption is this. V1 and V2 are exogenous. Meaning they're given. Our firms will only choose prices. So given wherever V1 and V2 are, we choose prices to maximize profits. Okay, so far so good, I hope. If not, rewind or something. Uh, let's maximize profits. Let's see, here's some Calculus is stiff. Derivative of profit for firm one with respect to price for firm one. I'm going to set this thing equal to zero. Uh, don't forget what your Q is. It goes in there. So there's a price in there and a price there. Oops, I underlined the wrong one, though. A price there and a price there. Uh, so go ahead and do your own calculus. I will tell you what I get out of this. Uh, long story short, this is going to boil down to be P1 equals C1 plus P2 over 2. For firm 2, D pi 2 over D P2 Set that equal to zero for our profit. Maximization condition. Again, same idea. All of this stuff gets substituted in there. And there's prices here and there. So keep it all in mind. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get that P2 is equal to V2 minus V1 plus P1 
plus C2 all over 2. All right. So what's next? Well, we basically have best response functions for each firm. Their prices as functions of the other firm's price. So I could substitute this in there, or I could substitute this in there. Either way, doesn't really matter. Uh, so let's pick one of them. So P1 is equal to C1 over 2 plus 1 half times, let's see, what's P2? V2 minus V1 plus P1 plus C2 over 2. All right, let's break this up a bit. P1 equals C1 over 2 plus 1 fourth. Might as well. I'm going to pull the P1 out separate from the rest of the stuff in the parentheses just because I want to. I'm solving for P1 here after all. Uh, plus 1 fourth V2 minus V1 plus C2. Let's see. So there's 3 fourths. P1 equals all that stuff, and then we're going to get P1 equals V2 minus V1 over 3 plus 2 thirds C1 plus 1 thirds C2. And now, whatever my costs and quality profiles, we have an optimal price for firm one. I'll do like an actual example here in a second instead of just this theoretical mumbo jumbo. Uh, let's do same idea for P2. P2 is equal to, let's see, V2 minus V1 plus C2 over two. plus one half of C1 of P1 and all that's going to break down skipping more algebra I'm going to get P2 star equals two-thirds times V2 minus V1 plus C2 plus one-third C1 all right, so let's put a couple of numbers in this just to test it and see, or not to test it, but just to show you what it might look like. Say in an example or a homework assignment or whatever, I tell you that firm one is located or it has a quality of 0.25. Firm two has a quality of 0.75. Firm 1 has a constant marginal cost of 0.1. Firm 2 has a con constant marginal cost of 0.2. I showed you how to solve for all this stuff. You could do it with all the numbers plugged in for your V's and your C's. Or you can just use the equations I already gave you. Uh, I'll leave that to you. I just wanted to give you some numbers and I'll throw some answers at you. This means that P1 is going to be 0.4 and P2 is going to be 0.5. Oops, I am sorry. I was getting ahead of myself. Wrong answer. P1 is 0.3 and P2 is 0.5. Uh, once we know that, we've solved for actual prices. We can substitute those into the quantity function. So let's see. We knew that the quantity for firm one, let's see, B was, what was it? It was P2 minus P1 over V2 minus V1 
Let's look what that is. That's 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 over 0.75 minus 0.25. That's 0.2 over 0 0.5, 0 0.4. And that's our Q1, our demand for firm one. Q2 is 1 minus Q1, which is 0.6. Then, if we wanted to calculate profit, the next step's easy. Profit for firm I is equal to quantity times price minus cost. So for firm one, it's 0.4 times 0.3 minus 0.1, which is just 0.08. And for firm two, it's 0.6 times, uh, well, I just blanked on price. It's right there in front of me though. 0.5 minus 0.2 comes out to be 0.18. All right. So there's kind of a solved example. You could work through it if you wanna. I left plenty of algebra for you because I don't want this video to be too long. I do want to point something out though. Much of our product differentiation, or I shouldn't say that. One of the big things with this is this gap between V2 and V1. You'll notice it shows up in both. The farther apart our firms are, the more V2 is greater than V1, the higher the price they can charge. Uh, so if the goods are very similar, they get into a stronger price war. If the goods are very different, there's leeway on price and they'll both be better off, both firm one and firm two. Uh, I mentioned already that we're not actually choosing the Vs in this, in this video. If we were, they would have to balance, uh, find a balance between the costs and benefits of moving closer to or farther away from each other. If they move closer to each other, they can gain some customers potentially, but they lose money on prices. Uh, the price goes down. So maybe trade off like that. Maybe I'll do another video like that in the near future. I don't know if this was helpful for you. Hopefully it was. Uh, yeah, if not, Sorry I wasted your time, but good luck anyway. Happy econing, guys.